Hi everyone! Today's lesson will be a bit different than the previous ones. We will talk about communication with the vendors. I keep receiving a lot of questions about some details regarding preparation our artwork for sending to the factory. I have decided to combine all of them in one lesson. So let's start our lesson number 21. If you have a second, please subscribe to my channel. First of all, I would like to mention one very important thing. Communicate with your vendors. Remember, your product is your common child with your vendor. The quality of it depends on both of you. Your talent, your creativity, as well as your vendor talent, your vendor creativity and the equipment level. There is no only one standard how to send your artwork to the factory. There is many of the variation of them and it's your opportunity to figure out the best one to make your work easier and more productive. So, first understand how much you have to be involved in the communication process. From my experience, if you are applying for the CAD designer position in the corporation, for example, a big retail company, for sure your role will be limited. They usually have product people who are responsible for communication process. If you have your own company, you obviously have to take all responsibilities for this. If you are taking a position in a small medium company, you have to figure out what is your duty in terms of communication? You can ask about this during your interview. Don't be afraid to look unprofessional but asking questions. It's a big common mistake. Ask questions. Some particular questions are demonstrating your professional level. One good example. When you send out your artwork, the vendor usually send back to you the swatch of fabric with the fragment of the print. Why? Because the printed fabric always looks different than the printed paper. Obviously because of different material structure. So then you can check to see if you are happy with it before agreeing for the full order to be printed. This swatch we call strike off. There could be several levels of strike off approval. You send them comments about all problems you would find out. They may send another strike off to you. After approval, they send a large sample with a repeat and the final sample in the end. It's a complicated process, which you cannot fully understand no matter what classes you take until you actually start to work. So you can ask only one question in your interview and believe me, you will impress them with your professional lab. You can ask, do I have to do strike off approval? If they said no, you are lucky. They have a colorist and a product people. They will responsible for sending printed samples back and forth. Your first and most important step to become a part of CAT team. Find out the way you are going to send out your artwork to the factory. The resolution. It's important that your artwork are executed in the same resolution. Otherwise, if you need to use any elements from your colleague design, it will appear in different size. I'd recommend the resolution between 200 and 300 dpi. The lower resolution will affect the quality of the print especially the small elements. The higher resolution will take a lot of memory and you may have a problem to save it on CD or DVD. If you communicate with vendors, you don't have to discuss a resolution with them, but again, if resolution is too high, they will have a trouble to open the file. The file format. I'd recommend TIFF. Talk to other CAD designers in your company. TIFF format can be opened by any graphic program, even if your vendor has no latest Photoshop install. But you can discuss it with your vendors if you are responsible for it. They may do have the compatible Photoshop version and they may prefer the original Photoshop format. Never send JPEG or GIF. 
those formats are not preserving all color information. You may not receive what you expect. The color move. You can send file in RGB or indexed color move. I prefer indexed because in this case the file takes less memory, which is important when you send it out. But again, if your factory asks you for RGB mode, you can convert it to RGB. I don't recommend send it upward in any other color mode. The color information could be changed unless your vendor really insists on CMYK. But in this case, you may need to work only in CMYK mode, so try to avoid it. The main and very important question. How physically do you have to send your artwork to the factory? Remember, ideally you have to send them two copies, electronic and hard copy, which means a paper printout. Why? They both have a different function. The paper copy shows to your vendor how actually your artwork has to look like. Any information you send them electronically cannot interpret exactly what you create. You have to send them print with color chips and indicate all RGB information for each color and they can reprint your artwork by themselves. However, they may have a different printer model, a different ink, a different paper, even a different temperature and humidity level in their office. So your artwork will never look the same as your design. What size your hard copy has to be? My advice, print out the area slightly bigger than your repeat in both directions. It's easier to see the entire repeat for getting the idea for better execution. But don't send the huge blanket with five, six repeats on it. It's really destructive. Now, why do they need an electronic format? Because they need it for color separation. So they can open your file on their computer, select each color and make an engraving on separate roller based on it. Please see my lesson number 11, how to do color separation in Photoshop. How does your electronic file needs to look like? This is an important thing you have to discuss again if you are responsible for communication. You can send them file with color chips. They will select color by color and convert them to the engraving. If they can do this, you are lucky, congratulations. But they may need separate screens for each color. So you can put each screen on separate layer and send them multi-layered file. Or you can divide screens by files, as I explained it in my lesson number 11, and send them all those files. Now, how are you going to send them your file? I don't think you can send it via email. TIFF is too big for it. And as we remember, we don't send JPEGs. You can send CD or DVD. It's a very common method, but it takes time. Unfortunately, you may not send a flat drive. It would be very expensive. I recommend using any file sharing platform as a uh, vtransfer.com, it's free. Or some private service if your vendor has them. If you have not enough experience in the file sharing process, contact to your IT support. They can help you to find the best method. What size your electronic file needs to be? You can send the same size as a hard copy, but you may also create a one repeat union. It will be clearer for engraving because, as we know, they engrave one repeat on each roller. Please see my lesson number one, how to do straight repeat in Photoshop. Please keep in mind the main thing. The factory needs electronic file for an engraving and the hard copy for color matching. So obviously they need an electronic copy before paper print. 
The best way, deliver an electronic file using the faster method through vTransfer. They will start the engraving process and send them hard copy by mail. They will get it by the color matching time. Very important. Always send the additional CD together with every hard copy. Your vendor needs to keep it for the reference. Usually file sharing platform delete all transferring files after a few days and the factory employees cannot store all design files in their hard drives. They will run out of hard drive space very soon. Next moment. Is it possible to send artwork out electronically only to speed up the strike approval process? You can try it, but again, you may need to send hard copy and CD later on anyway for the reference. The biggest problem in this case, how do they match colors? There is a solution, using Pantone colors. You can buy the Pantone books, one for yourself and one for each of your vendors. You have to match all your created colors to existing Pantone by yourself. For each of your colors, you have to find the closest Pantone and enter the Pantone TPX information for each color. When they get the electronic file, they will find identical colors in their book and they will mix them accordingly. The main benefit of this method the factory can start matching colors immediately before getting hard copies. But frankly speaking, I personally prefer the traditional method. I think colors are getting matched more precisely. But you can consider the Pantone method as well, especially if you are limited with timing. So now I think you are totally equipped for sending your artwork to the factory. You have enough knowledge to communicate with your vendors professionally and make them appreciate your cooperation. Next time we will start to talk about Photoshop filters and make them useful for textile design. Please subscribe to my channel, like it if you still didn't, and please don't forget to check your bell. See you soon.